some video clip also. Okay. Uh, some idea will be there. And we'll take up some questions more out right there. Uh, Professor Singh. सर नमस्कार आप आप दिख रहे हैं आप मैं तो बड़ी दूर से स्क्रीन पे ढूंढ रहा था धवन साहब को आरती बैठी आई गाटी हो मुझे लगा कि आवाज ही पहचान है तो आवाज से पहचान लेंगे <laughs> जी तो डिस्टरबेंस ना हो इसलिए मैंने ये ऑफ कर रखा था जी तो, प्रोफेसर सिंह आपको जान के खुशी होगी कि मूर्ति साहब ने टीवीएम्स के लेक्चर्स लेना एक्सेप्ट कर लिया है जी सर जी सर जी जी बहुत अच्छा वेरी गुड जी जी सिंह साहब टाइम तो हो गया है शुड बी स्टार्ट सर आई थिंक आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट ओके कल्पना प्लीज गो अहेड हां गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम यू ऑल टू द वर्चुअल सेशन बाय आईएसआरएम इंडिया आई एम कल्पना I would like to extend best wishes to all of you from the entire ISRM India family and I hope all of you have a great year ahead and stay safe stay healthy in this pandemic situation now coming to the today's topic of the virtual session rock excavation test for mechanized tunneling from TBM perspective by professor dr BMS R Murthy Department of Mining Engineering Indian Institute of Technology earlier known as Indian School of Mines Dhanbad may i now invite dr mahendra singh president isrm india and professor of geotechnical engineering department of civil engineering iit roorkee for the opening remarks and introduction of the speaker over to you sir thank you very much and a very warm welcome to all the Uh, members i can see it's nice to see dr gopal dhawan and my dear other colleagues <coughs> uh, uh welcome professor murthy and thank you very much uh, as we all know that uh, rock mechanics is a very very important discipline and uh, these days lot of activities are going on especially on the tunnel projects uh, maybe it is hydro project and uh, maybe it is road projects and uh, we have now very very stringent requirement and maybe the time available for us to do the activities is very less so the kinds of the lecture which uh, professor murthy is going to present today is going to be very very useful uh, uh, i am uh, uh, representing the isrm here and professor dr gopal dhawan is also uh, uh, there uh, there with, uh, with in, in this uh, uh, council so the isrm was uh, i'll just uh, say one few minute, uh, words about the isrm uh, as you know that uh, this uh, society or this particular discipline is not very old uh, maybe somewhere in 1960 or 62 the isrm was formed when there were some very catastrophic uh, failures uh, especially malpasset dam and weont reservoir failures were there and from there onward the rock mechanics activities were taken up and our group is the part of this international society of rock mechanics uh, we started in 1991 there are more than 60 chapters and one of them is indian national group and uh, it's a very active group and uh, uh, you will be happy to know that uh, we uh, after a very tough competition uh, we have been selected to organize the next asian rock mechanics symposium in 2024 so that will be a very big activity which this particular uh, group has been uh, bestowed upon and uh, we seek your support i hope everybody will uh, join us in that particular uh, symposium so beside this uh, the i this our national group does lot of activities and this today the activity which you are uh, attending is one of those activities and i also would like to tell that uh, we also publish a journal 
and it is my very humble request to all of you to please uh, submit uh, the articles for that journal. So now with that brief discussion, I'll come to the today's lecture and uh, very warm welcome to our great speaker. We have one of the finest rock mechanics persons in India with us today, Professor uh, VMSR Murthy. He is a very good teacher, very good researcher, and above all, a very humble human being, very nice person. And he has been teaching, he is in this field uh, for last 24 years. And presently he is at ISM Dhanbad. And he has worked as scientist in CSIR, CIMF, R, uh, Nagpur, and involved in research and development in mining and tunneling for eight years. Uh, he has more than about 10 PhD students, uh, uh, means PhDs to his credit and more than 190 technical papers have been contributed uh, by him. And he has uh, done a lot of uh, uh, consultancy work for many uh, organizations. I will just name a few of them, CIL, NHPC, NTPC, and so on, DRDO, and so many uh, other organizations. And he is a life member of TAI, I, ISRMTT, and GMI, Institution of Engineers, and MEA. So without taking much time, now I will request our honorable speaker to take on and go ahead with his lecture. Thank you very much and warm welcome again uh, to this, uh, uh, this particular event. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Murthy, you are muted, I think. Uh, please unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Professor Mahindra Singh, thank you for this uh, great introduction. And uh, I'm humbled by your inter introduction. And uh, let me see whether uh, I really measure up to it or not. Uh, so thank you once again, ISRM uh, India, the lecture series. And under your able leadership, I think uh, we are able to have these kind of series. And uh, I'm really looking at you know these lectures you know to be very interesting. and. Uh, Thank you for giving this opportunity to share my experiences of a couple of years that I've been spending on uh, various rock uh, related tests and all. So I think without uh, further ado, uh, I think uh, uh, thanking you once again for that great introduction. Uh, let me now uh, share my screen uh, presenting the talk actually. So should I proceed uh, processing? Sure, sure. So is my screen uh, visible, sir? Yes, yes. So good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you once again uh, for taking out you know, your afternoon at uh, important time you know, after lunch. I think let me see how best I can you know, engross you. You know, I just termed it uh, particularly most of the times, you know, we uh, get to know about only rock mechanics tests and all we talk about. But then I termed it as rock excavation test. Because, you know, we'll be doing something, you know, in, in actual and then see the, you know, performance. And then only we are basically recommending that, you know, uh, for the mechanized tunneling, uh, particularly from TBM perspective. So uh, that's how, you know, instead of rock mechanics test, I just mentioned is a rock excavation test for mechanized tunneling from TBM perspective. So that's a lecture today. And if you look at you know the key drivers uh, of this particular test you know if you look at uh, the poor cutting performance particularly i'm interested in rate of penetration of tbm and also high cutter consumption uh, in varied geology uh, is you know often questioning their viability as tunneling machines we have uh, though we have some good uh, success stories but then we are more often you know plagued by these kind of problems and then uh, apart from the investigations that we carry out in situ, I think a whole lot of investigations are recommended and suggested actually for in situ uh, level. But then uh, suitable rock excavation tests at large scale can really be, you know, uh, very handy and all the need of the art. And uh, to say so, uh, the, you know, the most important parameters of design and operation of TBM, you know, can be selected based on these rock excavation tests and thereby, you know, providing scope for optimizing the cutting performance uh, and also plan for realistic cutter consumption, which often, you know, takes away about 30 to 40% time of, you know, the total uh, time cycle of TBM. So 
ultimately our objective is to see that how the tunnels can be rapidly made as you know that demand is growing phenomenally over the last decade and if you i think you're all you know pretty you know doing this tunneling and uh, you are in this business and you are knowing pretty much aware of all these reasons for tunnel poor tunneling rates i think i'll cover more uh, oriented towards you know rock related parameters particularly related to strength and hardness uh you know which is varying uh from meter to meter or say uh, location to location so that's one of the worries and uh, you know often we encounter massive rocks uh, and jointed rocks this also pose you know these also pose a good challenge for tbm tunneling and hard and abrasive rocks together you know are one of the prime reasons for a low performance and high cutter consumption and often water makes you know uh, the you know trouble much more making the rocks softer sometimes making you know uh, the excavation difficult so all this you know basically are happening probably because of lack of some scientific indices which are not being captured in time you know right in the planning stage itself probably that can you know help you know at least uh, cross over some of these problems i just want to draw your attention to uh, recent you know projects that are ongoing projects you can see one of them is you know parvati stage 2 hydroelectric project i think most of you uh, are aware of this and i think some of you are in, involved with this projects and often you know uh, the problems that we are finding is low progress uh, rock burst is another problem and water seepage and cutter failures so i'll be focusing on the you know low progress and cutter failures more because uh, my tests you know are more oriented towards this so hard and abrasive rock like quartzite was causing you know most of the problem uh, in in case of pavati if you look at tapovan vishnugad also we have excess cutter wear and absolute in abrasive rocks again leading to low progress at some locations though we have some locations where you know you, you are getting some good progress but then often hardness and abrasivity these two are you know prim primarily when they got get coupled together can create really much uh, difficult problem for tbm and veligonda is another tunnel you know irrigation tunnel uh, almost completed now uh, this is a 18 km long tunnel two tunnels are being driven in very hard abrasive rocks here also the excess consumption of cutters as well as very low progress was on so i just wanted to capture excavation test done right in the beginning of the project you know formulation or maybe during the process of excavation also even if we do the rest of the tunnel can be made you know much uh, in a planned way so uh, the focus of the lecture would be on you know the laboratory that we have developed actually for characterizing uh, rocks particularly from tbm selection point of view and uh, also see see you know though most of the methods you know are all you know uh, suggested by either uh, uh, ntnu or colorado school of mines or isr if you see so in india probably we do not have uh, these facilities at many places and probably ism is uh, one of the probably very few places where we have all the facilities together so that was one of the major reason you know with which we uh, wanted that these facilities be set up and uh, we also devised methods to evaluate the key specifications of tbm in terms of let us say for example if i want to uh, find out the optimum cutter spacing uh, of the cutters disc cutters on a tbm probably the laboratory studies is the only way we can start thinking about it and subsequently of course we have to do it at, at a lab scale simulation and then finally uh, we take it to the field and apart from that you know we, if we can develop some models to predict the progress of tbm based on the rock tests that would be really handy uh, for the planners designers even the implementers or operational specialists actually to aid you know faster tunnel and uh, apart from this you know uh, indigenously suppose if we can uh, fabricate some abrasive resistant cutter rings through you know uh, the refurbishment of old cutter rings also that are being used or maybe you know manufacturing some new cutter rings so that the main hub remains as it is and then we keep on replacing these you know abrasive resistant cutter rings this is another area where ism is also uh, currently working and then uh, end of the day we would like to more focus on the indigenous designs whether it is an experimental setup or whether it is you know a couple of uh, water rings that we would like to develop etc so under the uh, made in india mission uh, is what is our objective and uh, during this lecture i'll be covering these eight you know major tests that we are doing which are all you know directly 
some of them are indirectly some of them are connected to tbm you know uh, operation selection uh, etc so uh, one by one i'll go through and the setup i will show you and uh, at the end i will also sh uh, show the results of some of the tests that we have carried out and then how do they basically use those tests actually data for predicting you know some of the key parameters like uh, rate of penetration and uh, cutter wear or cutter consumption so i'll talk about uh, initially uh, sershar aggressivity index i think uh, most of you have uh, uh, are knowing this uh, you know this is a very uh, simple setup but they're not available everywhere uh, it tells about you know the the wear potential of a rock uh, at lab scale and then it has been you know pretty well used for connecting it to field scale you know cutter consumption may it be a drill bit or may it be a uh, cutting uh, uh, disc cutter or maybe a pick you know on a road head so you can see the categorization part actually this is the most uh, you know uh, predominantly used classification for abrasivity which is accepted as a important test method under isrm also so you can see uh, anything more than 4 four, four and a half you know uh, is extremely abrasive and if you look at uh, the parvati squadzite you know uh, it falls into under this category so that directly says that you know how abrasive uh, is you know the the uh, rock and then how it could be related to the cutter consumption but then interestingly when we were testing uh, for parvati squadzite i'll just share uh, uh, just a couple of experiences you know we were doing it right you know in the 2000 also i did and 2006 i did 2012 i did and then 2018 19 also i did because as we are crossing through different patches of quartzite we found you know the the variation uh, in terms of the compressive strength in terms of the abrasivity so this is one interesting feature that uh, i could observe so obviously the hardness and abrasivity are the two prime reasons you know that have a potential to change the rop or the wear cutter consumption so anything less than you know two uh, would be you know considered as low uh, abrasivity between 2 to 4 you can consider it as a medium abrasive so uh, this how you know we have been you know classifying and you can see the setup looks uh, more or less like this i think uh, this is the 7 kg load and there's a pin you know which is basically of uh, en24 with 200 kg per mm square yield strength and uh, you can see a couple of samples kept uh, on the side of this particular apparatus uh, a sample is already put into a vise you can see fix it up and then you place this entire head on top of it and then try to scratch for about a centimeter in a in one second and that gets you uh, a basically a uh, warm flat actually of the uh, tool that i am using here you can see at the end of the uh, experimental setup you have a small tool or tin and this pin actually once it gets abraded we bring it to a microscope and place it in under the microscope uh, so that you know we have a uh, accurate uh, measurement of uh, the worn flat width so you can see in the uh, monitor of the computer screen you can see the flat width you can measure on two directions 90 degrees you know perpendicular so that you get an average uh, abrasivity index so whatever value you get uh, normally in terms of 0.1 mm that you multiplied by 10 you get a such a abrasivity index that's a uh, index that we talking imagine i talk about three uh, rocks which i have tested recently you can see uh, quartzitic phyllite has a value you know somewhere around 1 you can see that's an average value of uh, four uh, tests that we conduct it ranging from 0.8 to 2 1.25 you can see that at the bottom one and you can see nisic quartzite having you know somewhere around 3 uh, while quartzite has uh, even uh, uh, 4.05 and then higher value highest value uh, found was 4.52 so this clearly tells you know like how we uh, conduct the test and then uh, how many samples we test and what is the average value and what is the range the idea is basically to see that uh, what variations are basically are seen in these samples that we are testing and how do we use this information for uh, you know cutter consumption predictions and uh, planning for cutter consumption uh, what would you call uh, timely replacement of cutters etc so this is the actually the screen that gets us to know the uh, abrasivity index so in three cases i am just showing you exactly the window and then the measurements that we carry out so there's a small software we develop uh, so we grab the picture and then we measure using the uh, what do you call uh, mouse and simply it's calibrated under 4x micro uh, magnification we are doing actually the uh, photography and finally you get the value of sershar abrasivity index 
from the two values that you measure in mutually perpendicular direction. So these are the typical values as I already mentioned. You can see very clearly quadratic fill light having absolutely no wear. You can see the the, win, uh, the, the edge of the tool, you know, uh, it's hardly having any wear. And while you see Nisi Quartzet has a flat width and Quartzet has a clear flat width of higher order. So this clearly tells you like how abrasive Quartzet would be in comparison to Philae. So this fairly tells us, you know, how my cutter consumption uh, is going to be in these rocks. Now, uh, having uh, said that, uh, we need to basically collect the data of gutter consumption in these rock types. And then the more the data sets we have, obviously we'll have a better uh, correlation between uh, the lab scale uh, Cheshire abrasivity index and the gutter consumption in the field. In fact, uh, that has a pretty good relation. Now, uh, friends, I'll move to the next test uh, that's called uh, brittleness index test. And this setup also has been you know, fabricated uh, uh, at IIT ISM. Uh, we have designed this and this is more or less like similar to uh, Swedish brittleness index that's being, you know, used in uh, Norwegian Technological University and other places. Uh, what you see is we have made some more developments in terms of the design, like uh, the height of drop I can vary so that I can test even the hardest drop. And uh, there are a couple of more variations in the diameter of the, uh, what do you call, uh, crucible I'm using so that the surface area also I can change. So these are some of the changes we brought in and it's a uh, like automatic system wherein you can fix up the number of drops. The, the method is very simple, like you have a 14 kg weight, uh, you can see uh, there's a weight here, I don't know, probably you may not be able to see it's in the... ...by 25 centimeter, there is a marker here, it's automatically done and it drops actually for 20 times. And then you basically uh, take a sample, first of all, you know, on the left side, the sample size I'm fixing. So uh, normally I take a lumpy product of any rock that I want to test. I put it into a crusher. And then I basically the output size is generally between 11.2 to 16 millimeter. So for that, I use a sieve here. So you can see there are two sieves I'm using. One is uh, 16 mm, another is 11.2. So I drop the product, you know, that I crushed, you know, onto the sieve of 16 mm. And uh, some of them gets retained here and some of them passes through this. And you can see further, you know, from 11.2, whatever is the minus fraction will go down. So anything between, you know, 11.2 to 16 will retain, get retained here. So this sample, I'm placing it in the crucible, which you are seeing in the figure uh, uh, on the right side. And then what I do is I put a lid on top of it. And on the lid, actually, I'm going to hammer it up with 14 kg weight from a height of 25 centimeter for 20 times. So this is the methodology that was suggested by NTNU, uh, and I have given the reference and all. So you can see that once I, you know, hammer it up for 20 times, what happens is the material under this, you know, gets crushed, and depending on the brittleness of the material, you know, it becomes finer and finer. And whatever you know is the fraction uh, that is minus 11.2 again take out this material, put it onto the 11.2 sieve again. I sieve it up and whatever it is the minus fraction, I take it up as the Swedish brittleness index. So this with respect to the size I've taken. So in terms of weight, in percentage, I'm going to get uh, the brittleness index. So here one small uh, uh, like selection criteria for the sample weight is you know the base density of 2.65 is taken as the base density. Uh, considering the wide variations of the densities of rocks, probably the mean density has been considered as 2.65 here. And then whatever density of the sample you are testing that you, can, you have already with you. So imagine if you have a rock of same 2.65 density, then the weight of the sample would be uh, 500 grams. So if the density is more, then obviously the weight of the sample will increase. If it is less, the weight of the sample will reduce. So once the weight of the sample is fixed, so you are going to basically use, put that into the crucible and conduct the test. And on the right side, you can see the uh, sample I have taken, which is of uh, fraction between 11.2 to 16 mm. And, uh, you know, we have crushed it, then I saved it, then whatever is the minus fraction, I have taken it out. And then I calculate the percentage of the minus fraction with respect to the original weight, gets me the brittleness index. That's the formula you can see here. And uh, this is a 
slightly you know better view i think you can have a look at the weight that is there here i think uh, can you see my cursor yes 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 thank you thank you so this is the weight is getting dropped into this crucible on the sample uh, and this you know you can fix the height also you can change the height and you can change the area of contact so certain you know changes we brought in in this particular setup so that we can test you know a varied rocks and we can develop you know some suitable relationships for the energy consumed you know uh, how the potential energy is getting consumed into kinetic energy and creating new surface area so those kind of calculations are being done here okay uh, which also can tell us uh, the impact energy that is required to crush the material right so uh, that's about uh, the brittleness index and then i'll just move on and then uh, the conclusion here is generally higher the brittleness you know uh, and more is the borability that is the general durability and borability so this is a general uh, uh, what concept and it works well actually so that's how you know brittleness uh, assumes a greater significance and uh, in the ntu new method basically uh, what they call as dri drilling rate index so they use brittleness index is one of the parameters and they also add up you know sievers j value which is again a small miniature drilling that i do and then combine them and get a value of dri which is also uh, being used you know for predicting the rate of penetration etc in tbs so i think uh, this uh, i have already talked about and uh, the sample that we have tested three rocks you know i'm just giving you as an example you will find you know a very interesting uh, result more or less you know they come in the same category you can see that it's quite you know uh, sometimes you know confusing so whether at all brittleness index can be directly used and that's probably one of the reasons why we don't directly use brittleness index for the rate of penetration estimations so we add up the sj value also that is miniature drilling rates also so that coupled with you know the repeat the, the resistance for repeated hammering plus the resistance for indentation both we combine into dra and then we are using it so the the reason you know for this variation could be the presence of quartzite you see in all the three varieties you know quartz is one of the major mineral that's going to contribute i think uh, uh, i'm not basically a geologist but i have been working for these rocks or on these rocks i find you know uh, like uh, quartzite often contributes to quite a, a lot of variations uh, so uh, in a pure quartzite you find more brittleness and nisic quartzite is more closer towards quartzite so that's how it has the quartzite property and quartzitic fillet depending on the percentage of quartzite again you know the fillet also is becoming more or less more or less same brittleness but then it is almost you know about 6 to 7 10% less uh, than the parent quartzite so this is just to give you an idea like how brittleness can really vary in actual practice so we move on to the second index which we normally add up to the brittleness index in, in dra so what we are trying to do in sievers j value what we call as you know miniature drilling that we are conducting with a bit of what you are seeing on the screen we have a tungsten carbide bit uh, having a diameter of 8 and a half millimeters with a uh, conical tip width of you know say 99 degree uh, and then this you are trying to penetrate into the rock and then try to find out the uh, penetration versus time graph you are going to draw under a load of about 20 kg or 200 newtons so this gets you uh, the penetration in a minute basically so that value you are taking it as sj value so uh, typically for the three rocks i have tested you can see there is a huge difference in sj value probably this will answer why the rate of penetrations could be different so when you observe quartzite hardly you know you got uh, a penetration of 0.2 uh, to 2.6 mm so in 210 actually you get the value so 2.6 mm is the actual penetration whereas in nisic quartzite it has gone up to 8 and a half mm in quartzitic fillet it is uh, is going roaringly up to 16.8 mm so this clearly explains like how uh, the surface hardness uh, makes a difference you know in penetration uh, which is again predominantly due to the mineralogy that's going to play an important role which we will Uh, talk about towards the end you know all these results have to be finally correlated with the petrography of the rocks actually so that's the reason why we have added petrography also towards the end so that we keep on you know referring to the mineralogical uh, level you know uh, the percentages their uh, texture structure uh, their tightness and all those things actually okay so those things you know explain a lot 
So this is just to give you uh, how the penetration uh, signatures are uh, in three different rocks. So if you look at quartzite, uh, you can see the penetration has you know almost got almost negligible. Sorry, in this case it's 0.25. So 0.25 means it's hardly any penetration, and you can see the tool got blunt within a few seconds. I think uh, I don't know whether you will be able to appreciate that in the small figure. So that's the reason why you got a very low value of uh, quartzite. If you look at Nisi quartzite, it's a, a regular penetration happening with time. You can say on x-axis time we have and on y-axis we have penetration. So in a minute, you know, uh, typically what you see here is here the penetration is happening all through a minute. Whereas in case of quartzite, if you look at within a few seconds, you know, the penetration has got to uh, stand still. Maybe after uh, a few seconds, because the test started at 10 seconds and we stopped it at 70 seconds. So about 60 seconds I have operated the drill. And what do you see here? You just simply see that within two or three, four seconds, the penetration has almost reached the maximum and then it has become flat. And the prime reason for this is basically the abrasion capacity of the quartzite rock on the tool. So the tool lost its you know, ability to uh, penetrate, basically. So this this explains you know mostly why a quartzite behaves you know you know in a you know causing you know higher cutter consumption as well as lower penetration. In Nisi quartzite we have you know fairly a better what you call penetration with time, but not also very high. But if you look at fillite, probably this is the best way best case. So this is just to show you like how the penetration versus time curves in SJ can get us you know. Uh, a good uh, you know understanding about why the penetrations are not really good in fact here i was trying to uh, just uh, refer the uh, what do you call the nomogram suggested by norwegians so dra is being you know determined with brittleness and sj value in the nomogram on the left side and for a known brittleness and the sj value you can find out the drilling rate index and the range of drilling rate index for different rocks of norwegian class you can see uh, and then if you uh, see in indian conditions also more or less you know uh, they come under the same category, but then they could be slightly left shift towards the left. Actually, we are also trying to make you know whatever rock suits we have tested. We want to prepare this kind of uh, graphs for Indian rock suits, and uh, uh, of course, we are trying to do that. Most probably, uh, maybe in a month or so, we will try to complete that. So this kind of graph we want to develop for Indian rock suits that we are tunneling through in Himalayas and uh, right from you know Jammu Kashmir to Arunachal, as well as down down in the peninsula also. And basaltic conditions, etc. So, having known uh, the SJ value, as I mentioned here, uh, brittleness and SJ value. So, we are basically now finding out the DRA values, and you can see the quartzitic fillite has the highest DRA value, whereas quartzite has a value of seventy-five. So, based on the categorization, you know, that has been proposed by Brulen, you can see both of them are coming under a good category. But then, this needs to be basically read along with. Uh, a lower uh, SJ value also, as well as, you know, the, the petrography of the rocks that we are dealing with. So it's not necessary that, you know, everywhere, you know, DRA is good means you get a very good penetration. That's not the case, particularly uh, as you have to look into the uh, mineralogy part and as well as the contribution of the SJ value in this case, as I mentioned already, this has to be taken uh, with a more uh, weightage actually. So, uh, of course, in this case, also we have done it. Now we move on to the next test. In fact, this punch penetration index test actually has been proposed by Colorado School of Mines. And then it was basically worked by Robbins. In actually, Robbins, uh, uh, TBA manufacturer, have actually perfected this technique. And uh, today it's being you know, used as one of the major test uh, setup for you know, uh, understanding the normal force that I require to penetrate into a rock. So, what do you see here? Uh, is basically it's going to determine the toughness of the rock or brittleness of the rock. You can say the toughness to brittleness transition also you can try to uh, pictureize in this. Uh, basically through this test we are going to select the uh, critical thrust that I need to apply for a required penetration. In fact, this is what we are looking at in any TBM. So in a different rocks, you know, in different rocks, what kind of thrust I need to put in uh, for a given penetration. So uh, or in other words, whether we need to basically reduce the parameters to uh, looking into the rock strength and rock parameters, et cetera, so that we don't unduly consume our cutters or neither, you know, we put our TBM into 
hardships actually. So a suitable, you know, uh, operating parameter selection uh, can be done if you know this PPI, if you do this PPI test and know the uh, brittleness index values. So in this, you know, setter, this also we have fabricated very recently. Uh, you can see uh, it's a loading frame wherein, you know, we have uh, an indenter. You can see the close-up view of the indenter. It more or less, you know, uh, matches with the edge configuration of the cutter ring. So the cutter ring that we are using in TBMs, you know, uh, we have, it's an angle of, you know, about 110 degree, 120 degree. It's a different angles we, it has. So, and then it has a certain width actually. So uh, in principle, what we are trying to do is we are trying to simulate the penetration happening under the load of this cutter ring, uh, and then try to see whether, uh, the, how the rock is behaving in terms of like uh, uh, the force versus penetration, right? And the cracking potential of the rock. So this setup on the right side, what we are seeing, you know, as a couple of samples that we have tested very recently, uh, uh, this is where basically, uh, we have a two cylinder jacket. In this, you put the sample at the center and try to put plaster of Paris with cement. Uh, and in fact, this also we have uh, uh, worked out, you know, various combinations and finally, the suggested combination of you know more cement of you know 70% cement and 30% plaster of paris gets us you know a proper value so that's what we could conclude and finally we have started testing you know a number of cases uh, currently we are doing some tests related to pakaldul also uh, you can see the samples being you know broken after the you know indentation has happened and uh, then the graph skills can really tell you uh, unveil you many many things you know in that Generally, the setup, if you see, this is the loading frame. Uh, in the loading frame, it's a mechanical loading frame. You know, very interestingly, you can have different loading rates here. Unlike, you know, the servo control machine, we have actually preferred to have a mechanical control machine. Uh, you know, it has a different, you know, loading rates and all. So we go normally with uh, one millimeter per minute loading rate here, as suggested in the method. Uh, you can see the sample, uh, which will be casted into this and then placed below this. And there's a load cell that gets me the load and then the deformation, and then finally, I get to draw this kind of you know, graph. On the left side, you can see there's a graph, uh, force versus penetration. So what do you observe actually in this particular graph is you know, there are several peaks you know, and drops. So uh, the simple thing is you know, like here, the more the drops actually, the more the, uh, the more the drop and the more the height of the drop, more is the brittleness of the rock. That, that's how, and then, the peak load, what we observe in this particular graph, divided by the deformation at that peak load is what is uh, we define as brittleness. So you can see on the right side, a small formula. The brittleness index is defined as the maximum force and the penetration at that particular force gets you the kilonewton per millimeter. And in fact, based on this value, the brittleness class has been defined uh, in the method, in the uh, punch penetration index method. You can see here anything more than 40 is considered as very highly brittle and anything less than 19 is ductile and in between you have various categories of rocks. Okay, here, uh, of course, we have a tungsten carbide indenter. So just to brief you with a typical tip radius of 3.125, I think the presentation will give you the details. And we have an LVDT and load cell that get you the data of force and the deformation and a data accumulation to record the entire data. And then all these, you know, peaks, you know, a lot of research can be done on the behavior of these peaks actually in different rocks. You can see different, uh, you know, authors have done different, you know, classifications and then uh, they have different ways of predicting the brittleness actually. Okay, so generally what we are taking is the peak value by the deformation that happens at that particular force. These are, you know, typical graphs that we normally have, force versus penetration. This I'm showing you on the right side uh, for a quartzite rock, you can see the kind of drops that happen, you know, in case of quartzites. So these drops are indicative of, you know, the inherent fractures that are present, which are otherwise tight, you know, but then on application of force, those fractures are giving up actually. And that's the reason why so many of the times, you know, we have quartzite giving up to, you know, some kind of sudden failures, which we can term it as a sudden burst or whatever you can say. So this is how the, the height of the drop is the one, you know, that gets you the brittleness of the rock. And then, you know, uh, you know, measuring the brittleness, uh, you normally take up all the peaks and then you summate them and find out the average force, then find out the penetration. So there are several ways of doing it. So this is what uh, you can see another graph and the classification. 
So uh, this uh, actually, I just would like to summarize that uh, pinch penetration uh, is a very good index to understand the brittle ductile behavior of the rock or toughness of the rock. And then this can also help you uh, to fix up the amount of normal thrust I need to apply on the cutter for a given penetration. So this, uh, uh, we, we are going to use this information in the linear cutting rig that I'm going to discuss after a couple of slides that probably with that thrust, you know, I'm going to apply on the cutter and see whether my uh, volumes of cutting or whether my cutting rates, you know, can be optimized there with a particular spacing. So that's, that's how, you know, uh, this is going to be a very good input for fixing up our normal thrust uh, that a TBM must exert in a given rock for a given penetration. So we can have op option of, you know, uh, changing the penetration accordingly the loads. Now uh, we'll move on to the next test that we have developed in this uh, laboratory is uh, the aberration value steel, uh, or you can say bitware index is also known as, you know, bitware index, aberration value steel, and finally leading to cut life index basically. So what you see in this uh, uh, slide is on the left top, you, you see the setup. You have a vacuum cleaner to suck the material uh, after the uh, grinding process is done. So what you see is a tool wear index or bit wear index, you can call it as any name. We named it as tool wear index. Uh, so this is the tool, you know, on the right side, can you see uh, a steel tool, a cutter ring, you know, steel is used here. So this we are actually testing for different cutter rings. We cut this sample actually, and then uh, grind it to this particular shape. And then uh, we use the powder, you know, uh, where this particular tool is going to work on. Imagine if I'm working on quartzite or Nessie quartzite, I prepare this powder of a particular, you know, uh, size configuration. So that's another important thing. It's not like, you know, they say in the method that it should be less than one millimeter, but when you put, you know, less than one millimeter, there's a chance that, you know, uh, the fraction is of, you know, of only one particular size. So, but then that's not correct actually. So you need to have a fraction of different sizes. So there's a size curve suggested for this fraction to be prepared. And when we did that, you know, we found very reasonable results and which compare pretty well with the global results actually. So this is how uh, the cutter ring steel is prepared and then put onto this uh, weight, you know, below this weight, we are going to place this one, this cutter steel. And then we rotate it, you know, uh, with uh, uh, 20 RPM basically in a minute and under a weight of uh, uh, 10 kg. Uh, so this weight is going to uh, basically cause the uh, what you call thrust onto the cutter steel and then that uh, basically abrades the tool and the weight loss actually uh, the the weight prior to the test and the weight post test you know we try to compare and the weight loss actually is considered as the abrasion value steel so if you look at uh, the typical values of uh, different rocks you know this has been proposed or has been worked out by brolin you can see that how the different rocks have different cutter life index values so, and how abrasion value steel on x-axis can have uh, an exponential relation with cutter life index. You can see pretty well in this particular graph that as your abrasion value steel increases beyond 10, I think there is a very sharp drop of, you know, cutter life. So that means anything uh, less than 10 is more sensitive compared to more than 10. So it's almost, you know, constant. You can see in a small bandwidth, it is varying the cutter life index. So uh, you need to understand where, you, where our rocks are going to fall, uh, you know, for the cases that we are talking about, okay? And then there is a relationship developed uh, for the rolling life, actually. This is, a, again, based on the PhD work of Brulian, I think this I have quoted from it. You can see the cutter life index on x-axis and the different cutter dias, you know, we are using 17 inch, uh, 19 inch, 21 inch, you know, different dias we are using. So uh, as you can see that as your dia is increasing, as your CLI is increasing, your rolling life is increasing. You can see that. Okay. So the rolling life is important. I'll uh, talk about, you know, the exact rolling life in one of the, uh, this Parvati tunnel also. We have actually uh, calculated all those values in uh, one of our research projects. So I'll share that also at the end, towards the end, after completing all the test procedures. So these are the cutters, you know, that uh, we are using normally. So you can see the cutter ring here, the black one. You have a tin, twin disc at the center, uh, single disc. So typically 17 inch to 20, 21 inch we are using. In fact, this we got it from Teratech, you know, which is uh, which has actually helped us to do some kind of, you know, full scale tests actually in our rig. 
So you can have a better look in the in this diagram, the tool wear index or bit wear index, whatever you call. You can see uh, the weight uh, of uh, you know here uh, the material you know the the weight is actually here working on the tool. You can see there is a wheel rotating wheel, and the powder is actually getting dropped you know from a hopper, and then there is a feeder actually here, and the feeder feeds the material at a particular speed, 80 grams per minute. And that powder gets you know fed onto the disc which you are seeing here and which rotates at 20 rpm so you can change you know we have actually slightly made you know some changes in this design in terms of the rpm mix uh, increase in terms of you know even the uh, location of the cutter also has a significant effect on the rolling life so normally we have different cutters you know placed at different uh, locations of the cutter head like center cutters uh, face cutters transition cutters and gauge cutters so each location has its own influence in terms of the the stresses it is going to experience under a thrust and the rolling life that it is going to experience and the design also there could be some variation in that so if you want to simulate that so what we thought is probably we can have three such you know rings prepared and the material is fed and then we are going to run this particular cutting uh, tool uh, in different you know circles so that we simulate the condition that the different cutters are experiencing at different locations. So that's the reason, you know, why we uh, considered it to be a slightly improved version than the previous version that is existing. So you can see uh, in this cutter life index, uh, which basically considers two parameters. One is SJ value, that is Sievers J value, which we have already talked about. That is the miniature drill testing. And then aberration value still just now we considered. So if you see, this is the ratio of this, and this empirical equation, of course, is holds good, you know, for the Norwegian rocks. But then once we have our own rock suits, I think we can develop our own equation, which can be more representative. But then uh, this also works reasonably well, you know, uh, when we compare. So the data which they provided and the data that we got actually uh, reasonably comes closer, though there is some variation. So even in fact, let me honestly admit here that this uh, laboratory has been you know established uh, some of these facilities are very recent and uh, they have been you know established under the r and d project and most most probably uh, in a year or so we'll be able to have some good command on these equipment and we can develop some good indices for indian conditions and uh, you can see the three rocks that i have tested very recently uh, i know the sj value as we discussed in the previous slides uh, you can see the aberration value the fill light consumes, you know, hardly there is any loss of material. 1.4, uh, you know, milligrams is hardly anything. Whereas if you see the quartzite, uh, it has gone up to 11. So that clearly tells about, you know, how abrasive uh, is the rock quartzite on, on cutting cutter steel. So having known the SJ value and EAVS, and now we can determine the cutter life index. Uh, you can see on the column on the right side. Uh, so you can uh, pretty well compare with the results that we got here, that the cutter life index versus uh, the rolling life and the cutter life index for different rocks that has been you know, proposed by Ruland actually. You can see the aberration value still on x-axis and the cutter life index that closely matches with that. So you can see here, as your aberration value still is increasing, your cutter life index is re reducing. Now, lastly, I think uh, we will talk about uh, the linear cutting rate. We're actually, uh, seeing things, you know, happen. You know, what we are trying to do here is we are going to bring the actual disc cutter and run on the actual rock and see how the uh, you know cutting process is happening. So probably this is the best way we can understand uh, and then you know come closer to what is happening in the field. And that's how we have uh, you know fabricated this linear cutting rig setup for uh, estimating the specific energy in terms of let's say mega joules per cubic meter so uh, that's the very uh, purpose of this particular uh, uh, setup so what you see in this uh, uh, figure is actually the actual disc that we are using actual ring as i mentioned this was uh, uh, provided by terra tech for our academic study purpose and we have a transducer triaxial force transducer which can measure up to say 40 tons in the vertical direction that means i can press this particular disc you know into the rock with 400 kilonewton force and which is fairly a very good force that is almost comparable with whatever TBMs we are using in the field. And that was a very purpose, you know, that we can do the full scale testing also and see how the rock blocks, you know, uh, perform. 
Along with that, you know, we have 20 tons in the horizontal direction and y direction. So we have x, y, z, three directional forces we are going to measure. Uh, you can see here a quartzite block of Parvati only we brought and then we started testing. Now, what we did was like, you know, for testing, we cannot most of the times, you know, use the regular uh, disc cutter. So we have fabricated one laboratory scale, you know, disc cutter with six and a half inch and eight and a half inch. For the test setup, we are using mostly six and a half inch as a standard suggested. So uh, you can see on the right side, we have done some experiments with concrete also just to understand how in different materials, you know, the cutter spacing uh, as well as, you know, penetration, that's that ratio, S by D ratio can really have an impact on the specific energy values. So these experiments we have done uh, in the project and now we are continuing these projects actually. Uh, fortunately, we have the like uh, support from industry like LNT and NHPC and uh, NTPC and all, all major construction companies sending the rocks so in full scale so that we can experiment them. In fact, we are going to do for Pakaldur now uh, the full scale block test with linear cutting. So in this, uh, what exactly we are trying to do, uh, you can see on the right side, let me introduce you the setup. You can see the linear cutting rig, uh, what you are seeing, the full scale disc cutter and the block and the entire assembly moves front towards uh, the, the disc is fixed in the sense like disc will be remaining at the same location and the trolley actually moves. In fact, uh, uh, this when it was being fabricated, I think in the initial stages, uh, I think Professor Mahendra Singh had happened to visit this particular facility and uh, of course, I couldn't show him the final one, but at least, you know, some uh, basic thing I could show. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to measure the forces and measure the volumes of cutting and the distance traveled and then find out the specific energy. So on the, you can see the formula, the cutting rate is uh, directly proportional or is equal to K into P by P is the power of the machine and uh, SE is the specific energy which I'm going to determine from this equation on the right side. The specific energy is a function of rolling force by volume of cut you know, per meter. So this is what we are going to measure on this linear cutting rig. And then finally, once I have specific energy, so I'm going to find out the optimum one by fixing this S by D ratio. So once I know uh, the optimum S by D ratio, probably this is the one that I'm going to look at. And then that optimum ratio will get me for a given power, what would be the cutting rates in terms of say progress of the TPM per uh, say per minute or per hour or so, or per revolution. So those kind of things can be, you know, pretty well, you know, uh, compared from the lab scale studies. This is one of the, uh, you know, major setup that would uh, basically help us to connect to more closer to the field results. Uh, in fact, we have, when we did these experiments on different rocks and different, you know, uh, concrete uh, blocks, etc., we found, you know, uh, the relation, what you can see on the right side in the blue ones, you can see the specific energy on x-axis and the rate of penetration in millimeter per revolution finds, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, what you call inverse relation. You can see as the specific energy is increasing, the ROP is reducing. Understandably, it's a reasonable relation. Of course, as we have more and more data sets, you probably will be able to uh, confidently comment on this. You can see two clusters forming, uh, particularly of rock and particularly of concrete. So this is, of course, concrete, and this is for the rock. Uh, the left side one is the concrete. Lower one is the concrete. Uh, what do you call uh, ROP is higher, and the specific energy is lower. On the right side, you have you know higher specific energy and lower ROP. This is for the rocks that I have tested. So this is going to be done on a regular basis. Now we are going to have more data and more uh, reasonable results. Now, now uh, you may say that all these tests are lab scale tests, and can we really compare? the results of these lab scale studies with the actual values. So we tried our, you know, uh, in our own way that how do we basically connect the laboratory uh, cutting rig studies into the actual values. So Parvati's data, you know, we more or less, you know, collected the data. And then you can see uh, from the, what do you call, uh, in the table, what you are seeing is the two columns you can see, uh, LCR studies and actual values. So we are trying to compare uh, the parameters, you know, of a TBM on the uh, variable side, you can see uh, number of cutters, RPM, total thrust. You can see there is, of course, some variation. Of course, you cannot have one-to-one -one relation, but then we are trying to map, is there any relation at all? The total torque, you can see, uh, so the from the LCR studies, I'm getting these values. And from the actual values are slightly higher, you can see that. The thrust is higher, the torque is higher, and the power is also higher. 
So uh, the reasons I have explained on the right side, uh, you can see the specific energy values are also obviously uh, higher. Cutting rates, you can see that. And penetration rate, what I predicted uh, with LCR is about 5.3 millimeter per revolution, whereas the actual values uh, are, you know, around four millimeter per revolution. So I'm not saying that, you know, it exactly matches with it, but then we have a fair amount of idea to compare the LCR study based results with the actual values and find out why there are variations in practice. So you can find there are you know, typical uh, reasons being, you know, the, uh, the compressive strength variations in the material like uh, quartzite and the fracturing intensity was quite different in different locations. This is what we observed over a period of time. And we have also found out uh, large variations in the abrasivity and rolling force variations. And uh, we have also find uh, machine and cutter age, you know, are also very important with respect to the efficiency when you look at. Uh, chipping under normal thrust due to fractures present is one of the reasons why there is a variation in specific energy. So ultimately what we can find is, you know, the lower PR due to higher UCS and higher wear uh, along with higher FPA. FPA is field penetration index, which is nothing but thrust per cutter divided by revolutions per minute. So this is another index that we are using for defining the TBM performance in actual practice. So uh, end of the day, what we were trying to do is based on the LCR test, whatever data we could you know, uh, grab from the field and compare the LCR predicted values and the actual values from the field and find out you know, where there are you know, uh, gaps and then so that you know, we can improve the test method also on one side and also we improve the data collection part and analysis part also, so that we have a fair comparison amongst them. And, uh, uh, you know, whenever we do these kind of studies, obviously uh, data is more important and the consistency is important and the quality is important. So obviously for that you require, you know, whenever we are doing these tests in the lab scale, the pins, the bits, what you're seeing on the right side, different kinds of pins and bits we are using. So obviously their shapes, their sizes, uh, their you know, uh, entire you know, configurations, edge configurations are pretty important. So how do we make it? Normally you cannot do it you know, very easily. So we have fabricated one tool grinding machine you know, specifically for you know, grinding them and preparing them. Otherwise, you know, the quality of data will be under question. So we cross check all the data, uh, tools under microscope before we really commit to the test actually. Okay, but then as you uh, know that these are all, you know, very new and just we have started working on these new setup for the last one, one and a half years only exactly during this COVID times. So now we are slowly and slowly getting confidence and now we are moving to the perfection. So um, friends, I think we are moving to the last uh, test actually, uh, as I, I think most of you are aware, you know, petrography provides a lot of insights. So I don't have to explain this to all of you. It's a uh, Leonard gathering. So you can see uh, three rocks, which I was testing particularly in this particular uh, presentation, quartzite and Nisi quartzite and quartzitic phyllite. Uh, so we have actually conducted the petrographic analysis and then we tried to you know, capture those minerals and the hard minerals present, their abundance. So generally what I do is I take help of uh, our applied geology department particularly Professor A.S. Venkatesh, who works with me in these projects. So we work together to understand more intensely about those, you know, mineralogical, uh, what you call variations. Particularly, you can see the presence of garnet, presence of quartz, and the, the tightness of the quartzite. Uh, you can see that. And the, uh, in, in fact, uh, presence of garnet, you know, uh, as I was told, is in a higher order, actually, compared to normal. So that's one of the reasons probably the hardness of Nisi quartzite has really uh, has gone up. Apart from, uh, of course, not uh, uh, abrasivity is also quite high. Of course, quartzitic phyllite also, you have quartz and phyllite, phyllite dominantly present. And you can see the scaling of uh, the minerals, you can see that. Garnet presence, you know, has a reasonable hardness. You can see that much higher hardness compared to even uh, other uh, minerals like quartzite. Quartz, quartz has seven. Garnet coming to eight, so you can understand the presence of quartz and garnet making you know play uh, and then that's how the abrasion happening. 
I think uh, that, that's about, you know, all about the tests that we have developed. Uh, I think uh, uh, I'll just move ahead with only a couple of uh, uh, relationships that we can use uh, based on the tests that we have done. If you look at this one, probably this is one reference I can give you more. Movinkel and jo Johannesson has actually has worked and proposed this. What you see in this is, you know, DRI value on x-axis. And for a given thrust, you know, you can find out what is the... Uh, millimeter per revolution, that is rate of penetration you can predict. So that means I get to know what is the estimated, you know, ROP, rate of penetration, uh, with a uh, given So if you want to know this is a, if you want to have this penetration, then what thrust I need to apply in a given uh, DRI, or for a given DRI, at what thrust, what penetration will happen. So this kind of, you know, predictions can really help us, you know, to understand whether at all, you know, in field performance uh, is in line with what we are doing. In fact, these are all developed based on the field data only. So I'm sure this will really help. So this is one use, you know, uh, that DRI has directly on, you know, moderating your uh, operating parameters like thrust and also RPM for a given penetration. And of course, there is uh, uh, there are several methods. You know, uh, I'll not go into details of this because most of you are aware of this. Ultimately, we are using all this, you know, for penetrating uh, penetration rate estimations. So this is one of the NTH models that uh, has been popular. You can see that. So we are taking the rock constants and then trying to predict. And in the rock constants, you have mostly DRI as one of the major parameter. You can see uh, in this particular uh, NTH model, you can see here. Uh, the penetration I0, I'm calculating based on the rock parameters. And these rock parameters essentially are using DRA as their input. So you can see the penetration values coming to 6.82 millimeter per revolution. And which you when apply actual case, you know, the daily advance can be predicted to be around 13.2. Of course, depends on how much time I'm really operating my TBM, how many hours I'm operating. Here, I'm assuming pretty, you know, higher order of, you know, operation. So, but it depends on like, what exactly is the number of hours that I'm operating based on which the daily advance will depend. But typically, the uh, penetration per revolution will be in order of 6.82 in case of quartz eight that we have investigated. So this is the uh, you know case when I analyze for Parvati, all the parameters proposed in the NTH model. So for the given thrust and uh, DRI, and all the parameters related to tunnel, you know, the axis of the tunnel with respect to the ma major joint. So all those parameters, when we, when we put into the model, so uh, you can see the penetration IO is coming to 6.82 millimeter per revolution. And finally, end of the day, the penetration rates you can calculate. So this is one method. Uh, and then I quickly take you to Velikunda project where this irrigation tunnel is being driven we had an opportunity to investigate these rocks. You know, you can see these are all various varieties of quartzite. So all, you know, uh, are a uh, combination of quartzite, you can see that. Okay, so this is in Kadapa, basically Kadapa area uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, in Prakasam district actually. Uh, they have, you know, very high cutter consumption uh, and very low progress in some of the patches. And you can see the samples on the, right top you can very very highly brittle rocks so when we apply compressive loading you can see the breakage pattern so vertically splitting you know the, the high brittleness you know is one of the reasons for that vertical splitting and the variation of these rocks you know pretty high in terms of compressive strength it has gone up to even 250 megapascal and at some point i think we got 300 also so in fact uh, uh, two of our scholars are working on this particular uh, area like how we can correlate you know the rate of penetration and cutter consumption in the hard abrasive rocks of Veligonda tunnels. So what you see in this graph is basically two parameters I'm trying to capture in different rocks progress per month and cutter consumption per month. In fact I combined these two uh, into another uh, graph. What you see here is on x-axis we have progress per month on y-axis we have uh, cutter consumption per month. So these two I have actually divided into four quadrants and I try to place my rocks into uh, different quadrants. So you will find uh, most of the rocks, you know, fall in quadrant, uh, say, the uh, nearer to the origin. So you can see the progress per month is less than 200 meters 
and the cutter consumption is less than 100 in this case. So most of the massive uh, brownish quartzite, uh, quartzite with cyst, quartzite with shale and clay, you know, they are all, you know, uh, relatively softer rocks, you can say, where I have, you know, low cutter consumption and high progress, I can say, uh, reasonably, uh, reasonably good progress. But if you look at uh, the, the real progress, if you see the phyletic quartzite has given us the maximum pro progress. Whereas the lowest uh, progress, as you know, per month has been recorded by the abrasive could encounter in the testing. So uh, the idea of you know putting them into these quadrants is to see which one is you know uh, more abrasive, uh, which one is you know uh, more hard. So hard and abrasion scales we are going to impose on this now, and then that can be done. You know you can connect you know the progress per month with PPI, that is punch penetration index, DRA, that is drilling rate index, and LCR, that is what we have discussed just now. So I'm trying to connect now, which are the tests that we can connect to this progress per month in a given tunnel. I'm just trying to mention that. On the left side, you know, y-axis, what you see is the cutter consumption per month. So we can connect these values with the pressure, abrasivity index, abrasion value, steel, and cutter life index. So uh, this is how we can basically map, you know, the different rocks and then try to match their progresses and cutter consumptions. So that at the end of the day, can we do some kind of, you know, borability classification in varied geology? That was the idea with which I was trying to do this. So you can find this is the kind of, you know, variation we found. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, is the ranking I'm trying to do based on the progress. Uh, so the scale here I'm considering is uh, progress per unit cutter consumption. So I am now combining both the axes together. That is how much progress I could achieve per unit cutter consumption. In fact, this is what uh, I think uh, one can think of. Uh, maybe you are also doing it. I do not know. So uh, this may help us to you know rank the borability of the uh, you know the tunnel because it combinedly captures the progress, which is again dependent on the rate of you know uh, the TV advance. And the cutter consumption also on the other side. So both the things, you know, combinedly can be captured and ranked so that, you know, the higher uh, the rank, you know, uh, what do you call the, the higher the rank difficulties, the lower the rank better it is. You can see phyletic quartz are getting you a very good progress per unit cutter, cutter consumption up to five, right? Whereas, you know, the abrasive fine grain uh, grayish quartz on the right side, extreme right side, 0.39, is the lowest, you know, in terms of uh, progress uh, per cut, unit cutter consumption. So I'm, I'm sure you will uh, agree with me that this kind of, you know, um, quantification can help us to rank the durability in different rocks. So uh, these, you know, uh, these are the, some of the points that uh, I wanted to say. I think uh, I'll leave some time for discussions also later on. So uh, the presentation I'll share with you, these are a couple of, you know, important uh, relationships uh, I could capture from the literature. I think I'll not discuss uh, all this, but then, uh, you know, rock durability index is one of the recent ones that we are using, which is more of uh, punch penetration index based, which we are doing. And I think these three models you are pretty well aware of, which utilizes many rock properties. So therefore we require to have these rock tests to be done. And uh, I think uh, this is just to, you know, fix up the operational parameters, like what uh, uh, RPM I should have, what thrust I should have, what torque I should have for a given penetration. I think this is how uh, the relationships of different, you know, uh, authors, you know, I've just picked up and placed it here. And I think I'm not going to details of this. Uh, and uh, the wear mechanisms, you know, uh, this is another important point, uh, which the tunneling engineers are really plagued by. Uh, you can see often cutter cons consumes, you know, cutter, cutter consumption and their replacement takes away 30 to 40% of your time. So therefore, uh, proper, you know, characterization of the rock as well as tool is equally important. These are the different kinds of, you know, the wear patterns that we can see. Uh, here also, we did some studies on uh, what is the rolling life in different positions and uh, what kind of, you know, mass losses can happen and how do we relate the abrasion value steel with cutter life index. Uh, and then the previous work that has been done with uh, session abrasivity and cutter life index. So some relations I just, you know, captured and placed it here just to, you know, uh, emphasize that these parameters are quite important. And then uh, 
the manufacturers of uh, machines as well as the terminal uh, what you call investigators or the planners designers you know uh, must have these data so that we can have a fair amount of you know estimations you can see here also the abrasivity versus sievers j value relation a uh, fairly good correlation you can see that uh, as your abrasivity index is increasing your sievers j value is decreasing i think that's a fair correlation of 98% so again uh, abrasion value cutter steel also has a fair correlation with such stresser abrasivity index so this is just to you know reconfirm that you know these tests are quite uh, important and here i just wanted to project that the different cutter positions also has its own impact you can see the center cutters face cutters transition cutters and gauge cutters different models you know have different kind of you know predictions so you can have a very good relation between stresser abrasivity and the wear coefficient in millimeter per kilometer for different kinds of cutters and uh, the ring wear and the rolling distance that you can i can really allow and what is ideal consumption and what is you know real consumption you can compare for different cutter positions you can see uh, which one is really consuming uh, which kind of you know uh, cutters so the position of the cutters also is quite important so in fact we did some studies on this uh, this is again uh, some cutters you know which we collected the position of the cutters in one of the tunneling projects you can see the kind of you know where that has happened in the cutter edge I almost got you know almost you know flat so you cannot expect you know too good progress on the, with the, with these kind of cutters happening you know pretty good you can see a new cutter with a nice edge you know becoming blunt and then uh, you know how fast it becomes you know you have seen already in the laboratory scale studies in case of quartzite so in one of the studies that we have done uh, what you can see in this particular uh, slide is how the cutter position can have you know the frequency of failure so when you look at this the center cutters you know by virtue of their uh, reduced to the professor uh, murthy your voice is not coming professor murthy uh professor murthy i think there is some issue with his internet yeah can can uh, uh yes sir uh, there is a internet issue here so we are trying to reconnect it please wait for a while hello yes uh, hello can you hear me sir yes now we can acha i don't know when when we i saw a discord got disconnected is it oh, yes acha is it just now or uh... no okay man so we are okay 2 to 3 minutes so oh, i'm sorry i don't know there must be some problem actually i'm just reconnecting just a minute it was the slide having two photographs one is blackish another one is reddish is this one sir yeah about the cutter position 
Yeah, I think this is the one, sir. Uh, your screen is not visible. Oh, okay. Just a minute, sir. I'm just connecting again. I'm sharing my screen. So can can you see my screen? No. No, not. I think so. I think I have to be allowed or something like that. I think I am trying to connect. Uh, screen share. I am going and then sharing. I am okay. And then uh, you cannot see now also. Yes. I think uh, you try to go out and then join back. Maybe that trick may work sometimes. Okay. So I have already disconnected. Uh, okay, I'll just go out and then again reconnect. Okay, just yeah. Uh, maybe sometimes it works. Yeah. So can you see my screen, sir? Yes, yes, very much. Okay, I'll just quickly move on to the slide. I think probably the last, but one only, I think almost I've reached that. Uh, yeah. I think this is the slide, right? Yes. No, no, no. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Now you are there. Right, sir. So this is basically, you know, when we analyze the data from Parvati, you know, uh, we were trying to capture like uh, how the cutter consumption uh, was, you know, for, at different locations for different cutters. And we found, you know, center cutters, you know, consumed uh, the less, uh, the, uh, uh, the failure was much lesser compared to face cutters and the gauge cutters were the highest. And that's principally because of the rolling life is one of the reasons. Apart from you know the abrasivity and uh, the kind of loading that we are doing, so that's another point I just wanted to make. And uh, I think uh, last point I would like to make is the temperature has a pronounced effect of massless. So obviously, as we keep you know uh, using the abraded uh, cutters, the temperature rise will be you know pretty exponential. You can see the massless is very less, be up to two hundred uh, degrees centigrade. The moment you cross two hundred. There is again, you know, the uh, exponential increase of the mass class. So therefore, uh, I think uh, one must be careful enough to, you know, replace timely these cutters so that, you know, they do not get into these uh, high temperature zones and thereby, you know, causing other problems like the vibrations to the machines and the bearing losses and all those things. So uh, to sum, uh, sum up uh, the entire lecture, uh, I just want to basically praise you, uh, the entire audience, August audience, that we have recently completed uh, one uh, joint project uh, with the CSR, Sinfer, Nagpur, and uh, you know, ISM Dhanbad, wherein we have actually uh, developed these facilities and uh, we have tested you know, various uh, uh, tunneling, pro visited to tunneling projects, tested different rocks, and generated some good amount of data. And, uh, and I'm, very soon I'm going to share the entire uh, uh, outcome of this study. Uh, already this is approved by CPRI now. And, uh, uh, and we are going to apply for uh, another continuation project for this so that we can continue this work that we have started. So we have some you know, laboratory based setup being done at IIT ISM on the left side, what you see. And on the right side, we have some field based equipment you know, being procured by CSR, Sinfer, Nagpur. Uh, Dr. A.K. Raina uh, is the principal uh, you know, investigator from there. And I was uh, handling from here. So both of us you know, combinedly, we worked for this. and. Uh, some good work is being done by our scholars at uh, IIT ISM and uh, jointly guided by 
uh, me as well as uh, Dr. Raina. So the last, you know, uh, but not the least, you know, I thank, you know, CPRI and the Hydro Committee, uh, which has, you know, uh, kept faith on us, you know, to complete this under these difficult times. Uh, and the Geotech, NHPC, NTPC and LNT, HCC for their continued support, Terratech. And I must thank all the project authorities like Parvati, Velikonda, and of course, IIT, ISM, CSR, Simfer, and Dr. Raina. And most importantly, my colleague, you know, investigators, uh, Dr. Professor Shomnath and uh, Professor Venkatesh, Professor Budhi and Professor Chaudhary. And I must thank my scholars, you know, who are the real force behind this entire investigations, starting from, say, Vishuras Das, Sri Hari, Gaurav, Anil, uh, Manish, Janatul, and Sushant, and Saurabh. So I thank each one of them and thank for your patient hearing and thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, Thank you, sir, for making an excellent and detailed presentation. May I request for the participants if they have any questions, please? Uh, may I say something, please? Yes, please. Uh, I'm Gopal Dhawan. Formerly, I was working with NHPC and I worked for MECL. So I must congratulate Professor Murthy for his excellent presentation. Uh, I'm very happy to know that a full-fledged test house at IASM has been un established under his leadership and uh, with his colleagues. Uh, well, because till I was working with NHPC uh, and we were deciding about uh, deployment of TBMs, we started doing it with uh, Dulasti and uh, then Parvati was next. And then we uh, deployed a, a TBM at Kishan Ganga. So we were really finding it very difficult to get these uh, tests done in India. Uh, some agencies were doing, but not the complete suite of tests was, uh, was available here. Now, Professor Murthy has explained the, all the nine tests which are required. And with a lot of clarity, he has explained to all of us. I'm really thankful to him. And uh, you see, the, the, uh, these are very valuable tests because uh, this influences the, the selection of TBM. And you know that in Himalayas, we have a mixed feeling, uh, mixed results uh, of TBM deployment. Uh, in Dulhasti, it was not so good. In Parvati, if you see, and Professor Murthy has extensively worked on Parvati, uh, in the inclined pressure shaft, it was successful because it was the right selection of TBM. And in our headless tunnel, there are problems. Um, and uh, uh, although we are able to, 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 to negotiate a lot of difficult geological zones, but the project got delayed uh, to a very, very abnormal scale. Uh, I'm very happy to, to see that uh, Professor Murthy is doing validity of these results, which will certainly improve our understanding about the TBM and rock interaction for the future tunnels. So uh, keep on doing good job, Professor Murthy. I have just a very little question to you. And the question is, how do you account for influence of water on properties of rock? Because raw, water is the main culprit. Uh, this yeah. is in Himalayan tunnels, whether it is DBM or TBM, it makes or break uh, success uh, or, or failure of a tunnel. So, um, uh, and uh, Parvati, you know that uh, yeah. water was the main thing. So, so, so what is your uh, take on it? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Dhawan. Actually, the water actually, you know, some of the rocks, uh, by virtue of their, uh, probably the mineralogy and their... Uh, uh, nature, you know, to interact with uh, rock uh, becomes softer uh, and then they make actually the cutability, you know, difficult in terms of uh, 
say increased uh, talks and that are required and probably uh, though they become softer it doesn't mean that you know they help us to excavate easier but then you know if uh, uh, the mineralogically if they do not get stuck to the cutter tools probably they may not have much of influence uh, you know as long as they don't you know jam the cutting tools actually otherwise mm -hmm. some rocks tend to become softer uh, or their compressive strength even goes down by almost 50% or maybe 40% of the dry value so thereby the, it should you know otherwise help you know in excavating with lesser energy provided you know they don't get stick to you know stuck to the cutting tools mm -hmm. so that's the observation and uh, uh, i think uh, the load bearing capacity of the rock as it gets uh, you know reduced because of the soft nature the problems will be not more on the cutability it will be more i think towards uh, the stability of the tunnel itself so so there could be uh, the the uh, what do you call more convergence expected in those areas and the tbm you know if it is an open tbm then it has a different issue than if it's a shielded tbm so those decisions probably would be really making it easier or difficult for tbm to tunnel through if you ask okay. me this is my this is my response with my limited knowledge okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to, if you give me permission for another five ten minutes, I'll show you one small video clip, so that uh, it's only for about ten minutes, I think. If you permit me that. If I think you should go ahead, please. Yes, yeah. please go ahead. So, yeah. So I will uh, share my screen. I think there was some in between. You know, there is some issue. I do not. I'm sorry for that. So. Let me uh, see whether you can uh, see my screen or not. Uh, can you see my screen, sir? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the video I just made, you know, to capture what are the facilities, just to go take you around the laboratory to get the first-hand feeling. In fact, this is the pro project I was talking about. So uh, the quality of the voice may not be that good, but then at least you will get an idea. So uh, two minutes video only. So I think kindly bear with it. So in this uh, CPRI funded project uh, for establishing the laboratory test setup for selecting TBM and load editor, we have fabricated different equipment you can see, starting from linear cutting with buttonless index and manipulation of and big uh, uh, index and also a tool grinding machine. So the three instances are being shown to you one by one. So this is the linear cutting bit along with the uh, a data acquisition system and uh, processing software and all. Then we have a, a bunch of penetration index. In fact, this was a old uh, frame, uh, loading frame, in which uh, the bench penetration index setup has been prepared. And then, as you can see here, the tool grinding machine uh, for basically grinding the test bits, uh, mainly for conducting t g value. And uh, abrasivity, such a abrasivity. So, this is also a very handy machine. This was also approved by CPRA for manufacturing and use. And you can see, brittleness index is one of the major parameters for determining BRI. So this is brittleness in this apparatus along with the control unit. And uh, this is the silver J value in which the bits have been uh, aggregated. And uh, this is being basically used in silver J value and brittleness index together. Will determine the drill rate index. So we are standing uh, at, a, another, at another equipment uh, which was uh, fabricated uh, with the funding of uh, a CTRI uh, project. As you can see, this uh, the name of the equipment is uh, tool. Uh, these are you know some of the facilities i just wanted to share uh, there is some video lag also actually time lag and all i think you got some ideas sir now uh, what exactly we have uh, uh, developed under this project and otherwise also we have some facilities right from beginning so i think that's all uh, for now i think uh, it's over to you sir
processing. Uh, I think I have completed. I think if there is any question, I will be happy to take them. Uh, uh, yes, sir. There is one hello. question. Uh, there is one box. question by Mr. Sachin. Yeah, yes, you sir, can please. read it in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, it's under same conditions of geology. Can we distinguish between the TBMS oh. versus road headers as a size, shape, and geometry of the cutters head are different in both? Yeah. Okay. So no, here the question is like we, the laboratory tests are you know on individual piece of you know specimen that we are trying to do with uh, a typical configuration of the cutting tool. So the data that we generate from uh, different cutting tools, uh, whether it is Sersher abrasivity index or you call it uh, or punch penetration. So it all, you know, the mechanics that is working there uh, while cutting. So if it is a road header, probably the mechanics of, you know, application of those cutting uh, tool, you know, and the forces have to be understood. And the ones, you know, that are close to uh, that particular application of forces have to be selected. For example, Sersher abrasivity can very well, you know, straight away be used for you know, cut, uh, peak consumption in case of road headers. It has been used already extensively by uh, all European researchers and tunneling manufacturers. Uh, similarly, such a hardness was in initially developed for road header manufacturing, manufacturers only. So because the road headers were the prime you know, machines that were introduced in coal mines uh, way back you know, in 70s and uh, almost even 50s, early 50s also, but then their uh, extensive usage you know, has come after 60s, 70s. And uh, you know, during that time only the Sersher hardness index and abrasivity were promoted by uh, this INRS company in France. And that's how it's being, you know, pretty well being used. Right. And uh, pick, you know, under triaxial loading, you know, whatever forces it experiences, we can determine now. We are going to have, you know, along with the disc cutter, we are going to have a pick cutting assembly also now. So, which I, uh, it's in, uh, under fabrication, so I couldn't show you that. So, we can, you know, measure the triaxial forces under a pick also. And wherever, you know, however you pick, put your pick. Now, coming to the drum design part, obviously, you have to scale it up. You know, once I know the forces being experienced uh, by a pick or a, by a disc, you know, at a particular location, now I have to, you know, simulate. I can do that in a laboratory uh, and uh, in a computer, uh, simulate the conditions and then uh, calculate the total uh, uh, cutting forces and... Uh, as well as you know, tarks and uh, RPMs, etc. All those things we can apply. We can apply according to me. Is that okay? Okay. Can I can I come in? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, Professor Burti, I join uh, Dr. Gopal Dhawan in uh, congratulating you. In fact, a few years back, I visited your lab and uh, it was interesting that time and after that also you added so many things. So it is a very good lecture and uh, so much of clarity, I hope, means uh, as far as there is so much of confusion about TBM and uh, it will it will now get clear with the, the kind of the work which you are doing. So uh, compliments and uh, I hope yeah, the same thing will uh, you will continue with the same zeal and just one question i wanted to know because i work on the strength aspects so the brittleness index uh, can you just redefine you said that uh, how did you define the brittleness index so the the force uh, actually the brittleness index you know has been defined by different people in different ways you know so for example uh, with respect to uh, cutability with respect to excavatability if you look at uh, it is the maximum force uh, uh, divided by the penetration at that particular force that's the definition given by uh, you know uh, most of the people uh, who have actually used bitterness okay. right. so in denominator they are keeping the the dimension is millimeter yes yes that is kilometer per millimeter that's the unit people have proposed okay 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 because uh, to me, to me, it looks more from a strength point of view. To me, it looks more appropriate if I use the two strength values, the peak and the yeah, actually peak strength, peak strength and uh, uh, mean strength. You meant to say uh, yeah, but that is from other perspective. Okay, there actually brittleness index also is being defined by UCS by BTS. That is another relation people have proposed, wherein you know it becomes an index properly without any dimension, without any. Uh, unit and all so mm -hmm. higher uh, it is you know more brittle it is that's the kind of definition which people have given from uh, blastability or uh, cutability point of view 
so that's another uh, relation so many many brittleness definitions are there so uh, i'm sure uh, it needs to be applied as per the conditions and uh, yeah okay. it's very interesting now i hand over to the organizers please from thank you sir thank you uh, do we have any more questions please uh, good evening sir Uh, this is Dr. Sandeep Panchal from VNIT Nagpur. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, hi, sir. Sir, I hope you are good. Uh, uh, sir, the lecture was very, I mean, informative for us since we are also, I mean, introducing this kind of subject in for our B.Tech courses. So, yes. sir, I would just request that can you share this information to us so that it will be helpful for us also. Yeah, I will uh, certainly share my lecture material to you. No, no worries. And uh, are you a member of ISRM? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then I think I have already shared the lecture material with my organizers. Actually, I don't have any problem. You know, if you can, if the organizers would like to share it. Yes, sir. We okay. will definitely going to share the material along with your participation participation certificate to individual participants. Ah, uh, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. If, if the participants still have any more question, they may write to us directly. We will arrange the answer, respective answer, from the speaker, and we'll get back to you over the email. So, I think uh, we don't have any further question. As I said, they may write to us on a later stage as well. So, I here I would like to conclude this session, the wonderful virtual session. I would like to convey my special thanks to Professor Dr. V M S R Murthy. for his valuable time and conducting this uh, virtual session uh, my thanks are due to dr mahendra singh also for his opening remarks and uh, thanks to all the participants stay safe stay healthy thank you all thank you thank you thank you thank you professor murthy thank you sir welcome sir welcome to ism thank you thank you welcome all मूर्ति साहब सबको नमस्कार धन्यवाद नमस्कार सर